Good morning, this is another tutorial uh, where we continue with the same drawing and uh, what I want to do today is add a planting area and or actually a raised landscaping area that already exists and the existing uh, path and pavement uh, in this back garden. So to do that um, I'm going to um to to press uh, the letter B on my keyboard for my Bezier tool, and again you can find it in the left uh, tool set. And I'm I'm drawing freehand, which means I've got snapping turned off. Uh, I will go over snapping later, but snapping briefly. Uh, you've you've got this right hand pane. We we've used it before, and it allows for a more accurate um, accurate drawing. So. I'm going to start by clicking here and then clicking there and then clicking here and here and here and finish in my origin and that's that's my shape drawn and then I would like to draw my the the pavement around the the house so it starts about here I'm just going to I want to draw it roughly there and I'm going to do it there and there and here and there and go outside there like that and finish in my origin. So now these, these elements are created. I'm going to press S for selection tool, which is the um just the cursor arrow and and now I want to want to draw a path uh, so I'll click away again and the path goes around this uh, landscaping area so there's a couple ways of of doing that um, and the one thing the one thing that I want to um, well no I'm just going to do it the same way as I did the the other area so I'm just going to want to click B for my Bezier tool and I can barely make out the path here. By the way, this tree is non-existent, the one that is here, so this is actually an open area. It's been cut down. So I'm just going to click here, there, uh, go along that raised area and finish about here. Set my width of the path like that, and here, and that, and that. So now I've got my area set, so what I need to do is to uh, make them less square. And the way we do that, we press the letter N on the keyboard to turn on the node tool. And I'm going to press 3 to bring this into my view to fill the screen with, uh, with, with this element. And I can now modify um, to modify the, the corners. Uh, and I can change change how they look and the way we do that um, there's several ways of, of doing that by default when I when I the way the way I drew this some um, uh, this element I just used uh, simple straight elements and so the default uh, corner is called uh, a cusp node and there are four different types of nodes and you can switch between them by highlighting a node and and then changing uh, clicking clicking on one of these four buttons so this is the cusp node the, the corner node and this is um, a smooth node symmetric and auto smooth and there are, um, there are subtle differences between them so with this node what I can do is I can press I can I can move it about just by clicking on it I can move it about and adjust it slightly and so I can adjust them here because it's visually better and and then to um, uh, w what I can do to um to adjust them mm, quite accurately I can press control and click and this means that I can only move in either horizontal line or vertical uh, and then to um to to smooth it out a little bit what I can do is I can press shift whilst and then click and drag out a handle and as you can see this modifies the um, uh, the 
mm, the element between between the two nodes. I'm just going to click Control Z. The other way I can modify this element is I can actually grab it, and now that drags out two handles from both nodes um, beside it, and and that modifies our paths as path as well. So again, I'm going to click Control Z, Control Z. And I've still got this node highlighted. So the other thing I can do to make it smooth is I can click on this uh, Make Selected Node Smooth button and that's now smooth. I can do the same for all of my corner nodes. Control Z, I actually highlighted and uh, this path between the nodes, not the node, so I need to be accurate click that and now my path looks a little bit like an like a normal path so I can do the same for my raised planting area and I can highlight a node I can make it smooth I can make this element smooth um, like that um, but I want to just highlight a single node smooth it out same here, smooth that out. So now I can do some more shaping. If I grab this here, um, if I move them about a little bit like that, uh, because I know roughly this, this shape follows the, um, the, the contour of the path, I can move this uh, just to match it a little bit better. And this element here, if I click on the on the element and I go up here, I can actually make this back into a, a line. So now just uh, one side of the node um, controls um, controls what it looks like. Oh, come here. So there we go. So that's that's that element. Now I'm going to hit number five on my keyboard on my num number key so I can see the page and what I like to do is I'd like to um, hit S to want um, to have just selection what I like to do is assign colors now so what I'll do uh, I'll try something different today I'll hit the um, dropper tool so that's number d uh, letter D on the keyboard and this is, for me, this is planting area, and this box here sets the color for my planting area. And so what I want to do now, uh, I want to read on the bottom of my screen, it says click to set fill, shift click to set stroke, and there's other options as well. So uh, I'd like to set the fill, so I want to match the color uh, in, in this box, so I'm just going to click, and that should set my fill. Now I want to set the stroke, so I'm going to move my dropper to the to the line. I'm going to go shift, click, and now my uh, stroke is set as well. So that's that element. Uh, click S for my selection tool. Go to this element, and I'm going to do the same thing. So click D for dropper, and I'm going to set the fill, and I'm going to hover over my line, shift, click now my line is set and I'm going to um, click S go here and then uh, again D click to set fill and shift click to set the fill uh, the, the stroke so the other thing um, click 5 so I've got my page the other thing I like to do with these elements is I like to have the consistent width of my lines um, that depends on on the design and um, how much detail you need to put into the design obviously Th that will determine the thickness of your lines um, but I, what, I, what I like to do is I like to um, keep all my lines at 3 pixels and that makes it nice and uniform so I go into um, to, to my menus and I choose fill and stroke and um, I go to the stroke tab with my element highlighted and I, uh, the, the width is highlighted there so all I need to do is press the number 3 and hit enter and that now 
increases the width of the uh, of the stroke. So I am going to uh, tab out of that window, click S for selection tool. I could have just chosen it from from the menu here. I'm going to click on this element and again set the stroke to three. Hit enter and I can click on this element. Set the stroke to three. Hit enter. So these are these are now set. But the one thing I notice is that the uh, the gazebo and the uh, conservatory uh, seem to be below my access path. So the question is, which tracing paper is above or below the other? So I'm going to layers to look at my tracing paper, and right now I've got my planting area highlighted, and I can see that I've been drawing everything that I've just drawn now uh, within my structure uh, layer. So I've been drawing on the on the wrong piece of paper, but I'm just I can actually move these elements between my pieces of paper. So what I need to do with this island, uh, item highlighted, I'm going to menu, layer, move selection to layer, and I know this is my planting area, so I'm going to move it there. And now the planting area layer is highlighted. So I'm going to do the same for my axis. Uh, for my axis, so the path again is on structure, so layer, move selection to layer, uh, move it to axis, and there we go. Same thing for the pavement here, layer move to access, move it, and as you can see my structures are above um, above my access for a purpose so that everything that you build on your path actually is above it automatically. So the last thing I would like to um, to do right now is I'd like to, um, to connect my access. Um, as you can see they overlap here so the one easy way to um, to do it so that all of my axes is connected unless they are physically disconnected. Uh, what I'll do is I'll, with this item highlighted, with my selection tool always, I'm going to click Shift and click into my path. Now both items are selected. So what I can do now is I can go to Menu, Path, and I can union, so I can connect these two paths, like so. And now this is one element, one path, if I hit the letter N for my node tool, you can see that this is connected. So that's it for today. And please comment, ask questions, and we'll continue tomorrow. Thank you very much.